Um, I'd like to welcome Rich White from the Clearwater Community Sailing Center. I sometimes forget the community part in there when I say that. And uh, Rich is one of the directors there. He'll explain what it is he directs, I trust, as we go along. And he will answer all of your questions and give you lots of information about the sailing center. So maybe you all, well, you'll tell them where it's located, just so that they get acclimated if they're not familiar. And Rich, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for uh, being here, and thank you for inviting me to talk about a place that is very near and dear to my heart, the Clearwater Community Sailing Center. And the second word, community, that is an all-important word in our organization. When I first got here 10, 10 years ago, my vision was to take the Clearwater Community Sailing Center, get it out into the community, and then get the community to come into the center. How many people here tonight know where the Clearwater Community Sailing Center is? Okay. How many people have driven by it for years and thought it was the San Key Yacht Club? <laughs> How many of you know exactly what we do over there? What's our mission statement? Don't know. Our uh, mission statement is actually to provide non-motorized water sports to our community, it's all encompassing at a reasonable rate. We got started back in 1990. Uh, there was a group of uh, people in the community that wanted their kids to learn how to sail. And they approached the Parks and Rec Department. Mark Direct said, that's a great idea, where can we do this? And they had a little plot of land right across from Sand Key Park. And um, they got together, they were looking to, we've got to have some sailing instructors to teach sailing. They bought five of these Optimus Scrams, we'll get into those in a little bit, what those are. And they hired a young lady, uh, Kate Tremley. Her mother, uh, Linda Tremley, worked at the sail loft for me. And uh, Kate was a great sailor, and uh, she was a U.S. Sailing Level 1 instructor. They put together a program where you could sign up with Parks and Rec, go down to the beach a couple nights in the evenings, uh, 5 o'clock, and drop your kids off. There was no buildings there. You pulled into the sand, and you didn't go far enough. They got stuck in the sand. You'd go down, and the boats were on the beach. They had to take them off the beach every evening. And my daughter was actually, my oldest daughter was in the first class they had. It was, it was fantastic. Of course, my daughter grew up. She was born on a sailboat down in the Virgin Islands. And she lived on a sailboat for six years. And they were all 40 foot and bigger. And so it was hilarious. The next day after her first day in class, I went to work and Linda was just laughing herself to death. And I said, what's going on? She goes, you should have seen your daughter yesterday. We went over rigging up the boats. And she's standing in her little seven foot nine inch pram. And she's looking around. She's got this perplexed look on her face. And I said, Stephanie, what, what, what's the problem? She goes, I understand the mass. I understand the sails. That's the bow. That's a transom. But here's a steering wheel. <laughs> She'd never been on a boat that just had a tiller, a small boat. And it, it, it was hilarious. But where we went from there, they, they did very well on the beach. A couple years down the road, they were growing larger and larger. They needed a little more staff that had a little more expertise in sailing. Clearwater Parks and Recreation Department, a fantastic group of people. You want to have a baseball field, basketball court, or a swimming pool, playground, uh, they're the ones who will do it. Kevin Dunbar will do it. Unfortunately, they're not sailors. So there was a group of people, a lot of people from the Clearwater Yacht Club, and uh, just local sailors. Uh, 
uh, Clearwater is a fantastic sailing destination. But there was a lot of people that were interested in seeing the program grow. So they approached the city and said, you guys do a great job at what you're good at. We are not really good at sailing. How about if we put together a program and run it for you? We'll start a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. We'll call it the Clearwater Community Sailing Association. And we'll rent the property from you. The city's in there, yeah, that sounds good to us. So they did it. That's how Clearwater Community Sailing Association got started. Uh, just a little break here. I hate to stand up and lecture. How many people like me lecture to? Okay. How about a conversation? Do you like conversations? I like conversations, so I'm going to sit down in the chair. Now I'm going to ask questions. You guys are going to have to get involved, okay? It'll make it a lot more fun for both of us. So let me get my chair. Okay. So we got uh, Clearwater Communities Sailing Association started. We're a 501c3, not for profit. How much money do you think we get? Donated to us from federal government, state, or city. Much? We get zero. You know what boat stands for? Borrow another thousand. <laughs> it's not a cheap sport. And it's amazing, over all the years, everything we do, we are self-sustaining. We work through uh, our memberships and uh, donations that we get. We have fundraisers, our membership dues, but uh, everything we do, we do on our own. And after Clearwater Community Sailing Association started up, the first year that we took over, it saved the city of Clearwater over $125,000. It is a very small organization still. I think we have about 250 members. And it goes up and down because we get a lot of seasonal. But uh, the questions that I'm asked all the time, do I have to be a Clearwater resident to join the Community Sailing Center? Any thoughts on that? Yes or no? No. no Absolutely you. not. I have members from Ocala, uh, Pensacola, Orlando, uh, Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. They come over here every year for vacation. It's cheaper to utilize the sailing center for two weeks and you know, buy a year's membership than to go out and rent a boat over at Disney or whatever. And so we are keeping the price down. And our main objective is to teach people how to sail and water safety. And uh, we, we do a very good job at it. We've grown, when I first got here 10 years ago, we had a staff of five people. Five people total ran the sailing center. There was uh, one director, one program director, and three yard staff. And the yard staff was also our uh, youth sailing coaches. Back in uh, 2010, we had a very small group of sailors that were going out in our youth programs. On the weekend, we'd have three or four kids that would uh, come out and practice. And we had, we had a rule back then to, to travel to regattas. Now, how many people know what a regatta is? Okay, that's good. I'm going to ask to make sure you all know. It's a regatta sailboat race. But, uh, we, we had this rule that if we had to have three kids to go to a regatta to make it pay for itself. Well, it ended up that it was very hard to get three kids back then that could go off for a weekend. So you'd have one or two kids that were really into the sport, but they couldn't go to regattas because they couldn't find something. Well, that was one of the rules that went out the window and were just totally ignored. Any child that wants to sail, has the desire and the initiative to sail, we will make sure that they go out. 
So we were sending kids, you know, two coaches and one kid to go to a regatta. And they were coming back, and our programs started to grow. People heard about it. Back in, 19, er, in 2010, Clearwater Community Sailing was and also ran. You know, when you look down in the papers, a lot of papers will have the results of regattas. Also attended CCSC. Well, that's changed. How many kids do you think I have out on the yard on a Saturday morning bringing up their boats to go sail? Yes, numbers. 24. 24, 25? 60. 50, down just a little. On an average, I have about 40 to 45 kids on a weekend sailing out in the sailing center. Back in 2010, uh, our biggest class was the Optimus Pram. The Optimus Pram, how many people know the history of the Optimus Pram? I have one. You had one? <laughs> All right. The yellow one. The yellow one? I think I still have it. <laughs> Okay, back in 19, a little history lesson. Back in 1948, the Optimus Club, Clearwater, wanted to have a project that a father and son could do together on a weekend. Of course, back then, the soapbox derby was very big. How many big hills are there in Clearwater? <laughs> I mean, we can sit there in the middle of uh, Mandalay you're not going to drift downhill. But we have all this water. And uh, Mr. McKay, Clifford's father, came up with the idea, how about if we had an eight-foot sailboat that a father and son could build in a weekend out of two sheets of plywood for under $50. That's a great idea, but I know where do we get the plans for? Right across the page from us on the mainland was uh, Clark Bell's boat yard. Clark Bell's raised here in Clearwater, very successful uh, naval architect and boat builder. They approached him, and he had a design in progress that he was looking to do, but to make it fit into the Optimus uh, uh, parameters that they wanted. He locked off four foot, foot off the front of it. And that's what gave it its pram bow or the blunt front end. And they tried it out, and Clifford McKay was the very first Optimus sailor in the world. The Optimus pram, which is birthplace here in Clearwater, is the largest class sailboat in the world. They have actually been sailed in every continent in the world, except for the Antarctic. And Clifford tells me that he's gonna take one down on a cruise ship and get into the Arctic Ocean and sail, just so he can say we've sailed on all continents. Oh, we'll have to ask him about that when he comes in April. Yeah, yeah. Clifford, <laughs> okay. is, Clifford is a fantastic all right. gentleman. All right. But um, the Optimus Pram crew, there were so many youth sailing programs they were looking for a boat that they could race together. Every club, you go up to Long Island, Long Island Sound, every yacht club had their own boat. And it was different than the yacht club two blocks away. So when you went out and you raced, it really wasn't one-on-one -on -one racing. And they, they were all different. But the Optimus Graham caught on. It's the largest class boat in the world now. There's more Olympic sailors have grown up in the Optimus Pram than any other boat in the world. Take a look at the America's Cup race. Just about everybody that's on the America's Cup team started out in an Opti and a program like Clearwater Community Sailing or Clearwater Yacht Club. So we, we've had a very big uh, dent in the sailing world. Clearwater is phenomenal. We, we, we've done so many things around here that we really don't get the credit for or people don't know. People that are into sailing boat know Clearwater. So, you know, that's where our Optimus Tram came in. It's a, it's a great little boat. It was designed for kids. But 
and some of us got over, a lot of the women, they got over it. Women are fantastic sailors. Guys, I gotta tell you right out, I've been teaching sailing for 40 years. The girls are better students than the guys. You, you girls come to my class, you're expecting me to teach you how to sail. And that's my job, your job is to learn. Guys, let's face the other one. Why do guys go to class? Prove the instructor's wrong. There's a reason why you never hear the story about the wise young man. Hard to find them. But uh, uh, women sailors are fantastic. And uh, we've, we've got a great group that have grown up here. Paige Rayley. How many people know Paige? Or who Paige is? Paige Rayley is a member of the Clearwater Yacht Club who works in conjunction with us. The Yacht Club does not have the land facility to launch small boats. So they utilized our center as a training center. And Paige and her brother Zach have been on the Olympic uh, uh, program for the last 10 years I know of. Uh, Zach's medal, Paige has almost medal. I think she has medals, I have to look back. Mine's not what you speak. But these are international sailors that are well respected in the sailing world. And they got their start on the beach over on Santee. So, got a lot of good things going on over there. Talked about the youth sailing. It's fantastic. Youth sailing is the heartbeat of uh, the sailing world that gets them started. But the wonderful thing about sailing is there is no age limit. How many 45-year-old baseball players are at the top of their game? And that would be zero. Golfers, basketball players, football players. Yeah, we just age out. We get a little slower. Sailors, some of the best sailors I know are in their 70s and 80s and 90s and sailing is a sport that is for the whole family it's not unusual to go down and you'll see three generations of sailors out on my hobby cats you got a granddad son grandson all sailing together having a good time and uh, it, it, it's just fantastic but like i was saying the optimus Prime was originally designed for kids eight years old to 15. They were kids' books. But as some of us got older and we needed something to do, uh, a lot of the yacht clubs came up with programs for the women. Uh, Clearwater Yacht Club has the bow chasers. Uh, Dunedin has wind lasses. Uh, St. Pete has salty sisters. These are all adult women. <clears throat> Guess what they're sailing? The Optimus Brands. And uh, we have a regatta, we're hosting a regatta in uh, March this year called the Rainbow Regatta, put on by uh, Florida Sailing Association, Florida's Women's Sailing Association. And we're gonna have 100 women in Clearwater Bay on Monday morning racing these boats. And it is just fantastic. But, uh, We've got youth sailing going on over at the sailing center. What other programs do we have? Quad program. Huh? Quad program. Quad program. Quad program. Quad Disabled sailing. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm a disabled vet. Broke my neck a couple years ago. Got to, uh, tinnitus, I can hardly hear. I've got Parkinson's, so I shake all over the place. I don't sail like I used to. There is a big need for disabled sailing or adaptive sailing. I think that's uh, Clearwater also has a silver medalist, Brad Kendall, from 2016 Paralympic Games down in Rio. Brad lost both legs above knee in an airplane crash, but he sailed all his life. His father was a big sailor, and he kept it up. And he is a fantastic sailor. 
there is nothing disabled about Brad in any way, shape, or form. They just need to, you know, specially designed boats and a little, uh, a little extra care to get it going. But uh, we have adaptive sailing at the Clearwater Community Sailing Center. I'm a U.S. Uh, sailing adaptive coach. I work with the disabled championships. We've hosted the disabled championships two times in Clearwater, 2017-2016. Uh, and it's, it is so rewarding to watch them. Uh, the Paralympic team comes down and they practice out of the center. And it, it's a lot of fun. One of my favorite programs at the sailing center, we have what we call Camp Awesome. Back when I was going to school in the 50s and 60s, there was retarded people, normal people. That's the mindset back then. We've grown up a lot since then, and now there's so many different branches of uh, learning and physical disabilities that, and we're a lot more compassionate. And uh, seven years ago, I had a mother call me up. She had a son who was 12 years old, and he had autism. She said he was high-functioning autistic, but uh, she was trying to find a camp for him. And the horse riding camps and all the camps that she called up, as soon as she mentioned that her son had autism, no, no, we can't take him. We can't take him. And uh, I'm a sailor. I don't, I'm not a doctor. I had no idea what autism was. But it was a kid that wanted to learn how to sail. So I said, bring him on over. Let's see what we've got going on. See if, if, if I can teach him to sail. It'll be great. So she brought him over. I, I, I know that anybody can learn how to sail. It's simple. But I just wanted to make sure that I had the tools to teach this young gentleman how to sail. Am I the right instructor for him? So I came out and we went out for a sail. Uh, mother and father both told me how quiet and reserved and what an introvert this young man was. And when we were on the deck talking before we went out sailing, Mark was very quiet. He didn't say three words. I went, okay, let's go sailing. We went out. I rigged up a Hobie way. We went out and got out in the middle of the day and he started talking. He was a chatterbox. And one of the things about autism is uh, they will pick up on a subject and they will become experts on it. Marx was Warner Brothers cartoons. <laughs> he could tell you every Warner Brothers cartoon, who wrote the script, who did the voices, and the little extra things that they threw. He knew everything. I've learned more about Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam than I ever really wanted to learn. <clears throat> but, learn to sail. And we, do, we don't just take them out and teach them how to pull lines and you, you want to go that way, you push the stick that way, and we, we teach them the physics of sailing. Sailing is all physics. Uh, sailboat sails for the same reason an airplane flies. It actually, it's reversed. Airplanes fly because sailboats can sail. It's lift and drag for nobody's principle. Small uh, machines, lock and tackles to give you mechanical advantages, tillers to give you leverage, uh, how you to raise your sails. It, it, it's all science. And uh, we teach them that. And uh, a lot of the kids that come in, they're, they're not doing well in the sciences because they don't understand abstract talk. And a lot of our teaching is abstract. Like, the sailboat sails for the same reason an airplane flies. But he introduced Bernoulli's principle and explained it to them. They catch on to that. Well, Camp Boston picked up, and it's a very small group. I get like eight students a year for my Camp Boston. And uh, they're uh, autistic, Asperger's, any learning disability. I, I stop saying that. Somebody comes in, I've got ADHD. 
guarantee on that. Now, you're not, you don't fit into the program. We find a way to do it. And we keep it down to where we have no more than three students per instructor. That way, they get the attention that they need, and uh, we don't teach them any differently. Everything that we teach our regular adult learn to sail classes, use sailing, we teach in our camp and in our uh, uh, disabled sailing classes. It's just how we approach it. A lot of times we have to slow it down. You have to be very time sensitive. Uh, my young man, Mark, camp went from nine o'clock in the morning till noon. He never wore a watch. But two minutes after 12, we'd be out on the water and he'd go dredge. It's after 12, it's time to go in. It, it, it's lunch time now. We, we, you gotta follow him. They do A, B, C, D. You can't go A, C, D, D. Things are very se sequential and in order. Don't break the order. And, and don't go abstract on them. They're black and there's white. No shades of gray. But I, I, I've been doing Camp Austin for uh, seven years now. So many success stories, it's unbelievable. The true introverts that we've had that have uh, Thrax and autism together, total introverts sitting on the deck, they'll read their book, play with their iPad. Now they're going out and they're representing their community to Congress, to Florida, and all over. They've come out of their shells. They're excelling in school where they had problems before they started sailing. They learned how to socialize. One of the wonderful things about sailing, everybody is somebody in sailing. Where in school, um, one, of, one of my students, and they don't mind that I use their names. I don't give the last names. Henry, very quiet little introvert. They would say, boo, if you jumped at him. But uh, he started coming out, he started sailing, he started talking about sailing. And he helped me write a grant for uh, the women's club, for Camp Boston. Now he got up in front of a hundred women and talked about what sailing has done for him. He went from a failing student to an A student. Uh, it's just wonderful to see them come out. And also at the sailing center, one of the things about sailing in general, you have to work as a team. There is no I in team. And you know, Henry, uh, Marcus, a whole group of kids in Camp Austin, they come into the sailing center. It's, hi Henry. All the kids accept Henry as being Henry. And he's not left out in any way, shape, or form. So this broke the social barriers that they had and got them into getting out and talking to other people. It's just a fantastic thing. I, can, I can't talk enough about the joys of working with uh, uh, sailors with uh, special needs. It, it, it's just, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. They're, they're fantastic. And also, they are good for our regular kids, the uh, 420 teams and the Optimus teams, to work with them. It is. And the families. Uh, autism is one of those very expensive diseases. It's a, a, most of the time it's a single parent in the autistic family. And there's so many doctor's appointments and everything that they can't afford to go to Bush Gardens or to the zoo or you know, do Saturday things. And so uh, they have siblings and mom, dad, can we go to the zoo today? No, we can't afford it. We can't afford it because of him. No, we can't afford it. And it makes everybody feel bad. But through Camp Awesome, we have a fee for Camp Awesome, and I don't think anybody's ever really paid a fee. Kids come in sad. Yeah. Sign the liability waiver. Ah, that's the important one. I'm worried about 
but we've never turned a child away that wanted to learn how to sail because they couldn't afford to. But then that gives the rest of the family. You know, you got two siblings, a mother and a father, or a mother or a father. What are they going to do for the three hours? Well, why can't they learn to sail? So we teach the whole family how to sail. Now, they're not part of the camp. Yeah, I've got the kids in their own little thing. But we take the time and we take the parents and siblings out and teach them how to sail. So that all of a sudden, the family has an affordable, recreational activity that they can all do together. And it just warms my heart when I, when I think about it. I, 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 I see them. One, one young gentleman that's been sailing with me for four years, he's nonverbal autistic. He goes out and sails all the time. He doesn't sail, he sits on the boat, he enjoys the boat ride and the dolphins and the sea turtles. And I, when I run the class, like I said, I, I teach just like I do anyone else. So when we're at the chalkboard and I'm given a uh, talk and I'm asking questions, always make sure everybody gets a question. Nobody's ever left out. I know this one young gentleman is not going to answer. And I ask him, who wants to steer the boat? Marcus, you want to steer the boat? Mm -hmm. And he just watches the dolphins and have a good time. And four years down the road, you know, every day I ask him if he wants to get involved. No, no, no. Last summer, we were out sailing. Marcus, you want to take the helm? Okay. He took the helm for five minutes, but that was a major leap for him. Then we came back in, and next week we're doing uh, dry erase board work, and I'm asking, how would you get from point A to point B, and we got the drawing on the board, the wind, and everything, and it was Marcus, Marcus, how would you do this? And he got up, went over, he picked up a dry erase mark. Took a little boat, a magnetic boat, drew his course, and he took us absolutely correctly, point A to point B. The most interaction that I've had with him for four years, two months ago, I started getting phone calls. Coach Rick, would you like to go see a movie this weekend? Bye, Cliff. <laughs> That. And a couple of days later, Coach Rich, there's a movie this weekend. Would you like to go see it? Click. Would you like to have pizza? It's my man, Marcus. I get at least three phone calls a week from him, and they've gone from being the three second box to about 30 seconds long now. He's even at now. How are you? I'm doing fine. And he's texting me now. And so I got to do it. It's making a difference. And it's not so much me as the sailing center and the environment over there that we've built and the group of people that work with me. It's fantastic. I just love it. So that, that, that's my little speech on Camp Bob. So I'm very proud of it. Uh, we started out, uh, we've been in. Uh, uh, chicken Soup for uh, the Autistic Soul, an article, Ann Harris helped write that for us. Ann's a dear friend of mine. And uh, we won a couple of awards through U.S. Sailing. U.S. Sailing is the national governing body for the sport of sailing. Uh, they decided all, all Olympic sports in the United States had to have a national governing body. And so they took the old North American Yacht Racing Union renamed it U.S. Sailing, and they are in charge of our uh, Olympic sports. And uh, they take a look at Camp Boston and thought it was fantastic. Cold other community sailing centers, by the way. There's three other programs going on across the country right now that are following Camp Boston's footsteps. And in fact, Charleston Yacht Club in Charleston, South Carolina is just starting an autistic program. And they've been in contact with me. They're, they're following what we've done. But once again, you know, clear waters in the 
cutting edge of the sailing world. Uh, we have sailing for everybody from five years old to 105. If you're 106, I'll get you out on the water somewhere. So, uh, we, we have fun sailing. It, it's not all racing. That, that's one of the things, you know, people think about yacht clubs and sailing centers, and they think about, you know, yacht racing and the competitiveness. If you go down to any yacht club and you take a look at the docks, you look at the big racing boats, you count them, you can count them on both hands at a very big yacht club. But you look at the cruising boats, the boats that are out there for fun, they weigh outnumber all the racing boats. Sailing is supposed to be fun. A very good friend of mine, Gary Johnson, who uh, won the America's Cup with uh, Ted Turner many, many years ago. He said, if you're not having fun in it, you need to get out of the sport. Sail for fun. He said, as far as winning sailboat racing, that you're going to lose more sailboat races than you ever win. If you have 20 boats in a race, and the skippers are all equal in their skills, you got a 1 in 20 chance of winning. That's not very good odds. And if you want a good trophy, go down the street, and Beehive Trophy will make one up for you. And it'll be a lot cheaper than going out and winning it. But uh, it won't mean as much. Uh, we do work uh, very closely with the Clearwater Yacht Club. Uh, we have Laser Midwinters coming up uh, next month. And uh, we are looking at having from 180 to 200 lasers from around the world coming in. The laser's an Olympic class boat. One man vote, one woman vote, one person vote. But uh, uh, we've been doing it, and it, it's just fantastic. But once again, it, it's a uh, collaboration between the Yacht Club and the Sailing Center to make this happen. And what good is that for Clearwater? We've got all these sailors coming in here. Well, what is our main business in Clearwater Beach? Tourism. Tourism. Uh, these guys are sailors, but they're also tourists because they're coming in with their families. This is their winter vacation. They're eating here, they're staying at hotels, they're buying gifts at our gift shop, and they're going back to their home yacht clubs and sailing centers and talking about what a great time they had. The water brings more in. So that's another way that the water community is sailing helps our community is gets the word out as to what a great sailing destination this is. Yeah, so I know we have some old sailors in here. Yes. What about those of us who are sailors but might like to do other non non motorized sports? I was looking at your brochure and if you could Okay. You know, give so, hints to those the, the, for those of us that are probably not going to sail. <laughs> okay. Well uh, those of you that think that you're not going to sail once you get out there, I hear you. you will get fucked in. Uh, we do have, like I said, non-motorized water sports. We have stand-up paddleboarding, kayak, windsurfing, and sailing at the sailing center. And uh, we, we used to have classes in stand-up paddleboarding that we charge for, but it, it's so simple to stand up and paddleboard. I, I can teach you everything you need to know about stand up paddleboarding in less than five minutes. <laughs> How many people here are paddleboarding? <laughs> okay. Just like flying a plane. Anybody can fly a plane. It's take off and landing is our help. Getting up on board is the hard part. That's very easy. Get on your hands and knees. Looking straight forward on board. You get up into the doggy position. You push yourself up. Look at the horizon. Never ever look at your feet. <laughs> because we have this habit that we look at our feet and the board's gonna wobble a little. So when the board starts to wobble, being the smart humans that we are, we try and overcorrect ourselves. Next thing you know, you're jogging on top of the board into the water. Well, one of the wonderful things about our body, 
when you go and you step onto a people mover at the airport or an escalator, you get that sudden move. Do you think, I need to adjust my body for that, or does your body just automatically compensate for that movement? Look at the horizon, let your body compensate itself. It'll do you well. Yes? Do you have both the people who can come and use, or only if you want to take lessons? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, coming to that, uh, at the Clearwater Community Sailing, there's two ways to utilize the center. You can uh, rent from us. We rent to all of our tourists that aren't going to be here for that long. We have hourly rentals. Or you can join as a member. We have individual membership, youth membership, and family membership. Family membership is $525 for a year. And that goes from anniversary day to anniversary day. What do you get with your membership? You get unlimited use of all the toys in the stand box. The kayaks, the stand-up paddle boards, windsurfers, and the sailboats. And no additional charge. Yes, sir. Just expound a little bit on sailboats. What are the toys? Sailboat toys. What toys do we have? Sure. sure. I'll, I'll give you a list of what boats we have here in just a minute. Let me just uh, go over the membership, uh, different memberships, and then I'll tell you about the boats that we have. Uh, uh, family membership, 525. That's a household. Most people come in and rent from us, get the tours for a two hour stint. They're going to pay a $10 a day daily membership fee, and then it starts out at $35 an hour for a sailboat. So, and it goes up to 45 So, for a two hour stint, they're going to spend $90 to $120 just to go out on the water for two hours. You can join the family membership, 525 for 365 days a year of water fun. Uh, individual membership, you know, just you by yourself, $400 for a year. I made a mistake uh, a couple of years ago. I took my daughters over to Disney and I rented a little sunfish sailboat over at uh, Wilderness Park. And it cost me $500 for an afternoon sailing at Disney. By the time I pay parking, park admission, there. So we're the better deal. So yeah, we, it, it, it's great. And then we have our youth membership. We we do encourage youth to get into it. So for $195, a youth under 18 or still in high school can join the sailing center and have all the privileges of any other member and utilize our votes. Uh, we have 17 stand-up paddle boards at the moment, and uh, three different sizes so that we accommodate you know, everybody from the small sailors to the extra large to come down there. And what we'd like to do, we have nine kayaks right now. We have both tandems and single kayaks. Uh, 15 windsurfers. And uh, to take the windsurfers out, we do ask that you have, have experience windsurfing or take a lesson through Justin, our uh, windsurfing coach. He's fantastic and you know, the prices are very reasonable. But in uh, three hours time with Justin, you're gonna be out there windsurfing like the best of them. He's very good and they tell me it's easy. I never mastered windsurfing. I got into wind falling down. I could get it up, get it going, then fall off. And so uh, the sailboats, we have the Optimus Prams. Uh, we have sunfish. Sunfish, uh, everybody know what sunfish is? Anybody doesn't know? Okay, and sunfish is. Uh, they came out in the 1950s. They were a uh, teen rig sail, a little triangle, very easy, one person boat. We have those. Uh, then we have the big fish, which uh, uh, Island Packet from down in Largo got the idea. They saw the sunfish. Uh, that looks great, but it's only for one person. My wife wants to go out on one with me. So they made a big fish which is a sunfish that's a 
a little longer, a little wider. That's a cockpit built for two people. So, you know, it, it, it's as much fun as a sunfish, but two people can have fun on it. Uh, then we have 420s. 420s is uh, a model haul, meaning just one haul on it. Sloop rig has a mainsail in the back and a jib in the front. And it is the training boat of choice across the United States for collegiate sailing, high school sailing. They, back in the day, they were considered high performance, but they're mediocre now. They're kind of on the slow side uh, it, with today's standards. But uh, they're, they're, they're an exciting boat. They do caps on us, which is half the fun. So again, we have those. Uh, we have uh, Lightning which is a 19-foot boat that was designed back in 1933, I believe it was, by uh, uh, Rod St Stevens from uh, Spartan Stevens Yacht Design. They designed a lot of the America's Cup boats. But it is a very forgiving day sailor. Some of us, I love catamaran sailing. I love the high speed and going. I don't like to do it in February. It gets cold, you're going to get wet. So I like to go out on something where I can keep dry and have an enjoyable sail in the winter afternoons. And we have a couple boats that fit into that category. And uh, lightning is our, our biggest one. Uh, Hobie cast catamarans seem to be the biggest one. And, you, know, you can go to any resort and they have catamarans on the beach. And Hobie cats are the big ones. And so we have uh, nine Hobie cat waves right now. They're 14 foot long, one sail. They don't have a boom. Everybody knows what the boom is? That aluminum bar that goes across, and boom is the sound it makes when it hits your head. Well, these boats don't have booms. They have what we call a swish. It's loose footed. No boom, so when it hits your head, it just goes swish as it goes across. Uh, they are our most popular boat. Uh, the guests that ride on them, you know, they're, they're fun to sail, they're responsive, but it's like they have a built-in reclining chair and you can just lay down on the trampoline and enjoy them. Plus, you, know, you can park them up onto the spoil islands and it doesn't hurt them. And so we have those. Uh, we have the Hobie Getaway, which is a larger version. It's 16 foot long, Hobie Getaway, and it has the trampoline in the back and everybody sits on it, trampoline in the front, you can take up to six people on it. It's an enjoyable sale. But when you start talking catamarans, everybody, you know, been watching the America's Cup race and uh, uh, the new NACRA 17s that have been in the uh, Olympics lately. And these things are approaching unbelievable speeds. And so uh, we get a lot of sailors come in that are on vacation that are high-tech cat sailors and you know, they don't want to go out on the way. You know, it's like driving the Ferrari or the Geo Metro. You know, they want the Ferrari. So uh, we, we hooked up with RS Yachts out of England and we got a very good deal. We have an RS-16, which is a step above the beach cats, the waves, and the getaways but it's down from the really high-tech boats. And uh, so we got those uh, available. Uh, we have a 26-foot uh, S2, so a 0.9-meter boat, which uh, we're, we're just finishing up. It's taken us way too long to get it ready. It was donated to us. But uh, I, I, I'm a U.S. sailing uh, offshore instructor, and we're going to start offering basic classes. A lot of people come to the sailing center and they'll take the learn to sail lessons with the idea that in a couple of years I want to go down to the islands and charter a boat. Well, sailing a small day sailor or catamaran, the theory is the same. An eight-foot boat sails for the same reason that an 80-foot boat does. The theory is the same. But once you get out into the Gulf, there's different things that you do, different maneuvers, and so we're going to start offering basic keelboard boat classes on this 26-foot boat, getting people ready to go and take their three-day ASA 101 or uh, 
the U.S. sailing uh, three-day level boards to learn how to charter and sail bigger boats. Uh, it, we're, we're very excited about that. And uh, what, was, what was the other question? Uh, what boats do we have? Oh, we, we do have, we have six e-scouts. E-scouts are 28 foot monohulls. They're in the lake scouts, scouting. They don't have a pointing bow. They're rounded. And they were donated to us by, from uh, Sarasota Sailing Squad. They are fun. They are very fast. They're oversailed and lightweight. Uh, we don't like to take them out in winds over 12 knots because they are just screamers. And yet it takes four people to sail it because they are so long that you know, one person can't reach all the lines. So you have to have some people on board. But they're fun. And we're putting together uh, learn to race programs on that so we can have uh, people come out and have some fun racing on them and add a little more excitement. Uh, you know, we teach sailing on all of our boats. Uh, we have uh, two-day learn-to-sail classes that are four hours on Saturday and four hours on Sunday. And we take up to 10 students in a class. But then there are people that don't like to take that group lesson. They like that individual. So we do have individual lessons that you can sign up for. They're a little more expensive, but you get a lot out of them because you got that one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor, which is all important. Um, we do look forward to sending our kids on the, Olymp the Olympic pathways. Uh, 2000, you have a question? No, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, in 2017, we had the first time in 10 years Olympic class world championship held in the United States and we held it here in Clearwater. That was a world championship, but we couldn't just go that far again. We couldn't just do one Olympic class. We had three Olympic class boats. We had uh, the 49ers, 49er FX, which is the women's double-handed uh, high-speed dinghy, and the NACRA 17 catamarans all here at the same time. The first time in the history of sailing in the Olympics that they had three Olympic class boats holding their world championships in the same place at the same time. So to know what the exciting things like that are happening, would we get on the, the website? For the get on the website, come down, ask questions. Uh, it, it, it's not hard, hard to find out. We, we do have socials. Uh, you know, it's not all sailing. Uh, this Friday night, we have double feature night. We're going to have a whale of a good time at the sailing center. First movie we're showing at 6 o'clock is The Heart of the Sea. How many people have seen that or heard about it? Okay, you know who Herman Melville is? Okay, Moby Dick. Well, he wrote it. Moby Dick, from a true story, yeah. the story of the Essex, the whaling ship Essex. And part of the sea is the story about the Essex. And it's taken from Herman Melville interviewing the survivors of it. And then at uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock, we have popcorn and sodas, and a little. We have uh, the 1958 version with Gregory Peck, Moby Dick. And uh, so we're going to have that on the upstairs. And it's free. It's free to the public. So yeah, it's a good way to find out what's happening at the Sailing Center. Meet some very interesting people. Watch a fantastic show. And get to know what the Sailing Center is all about. There's a lot more to it than just a yacht club and people riding on boats out there. Yes? On Tuesdays at 9.30, we take an art class upstairs. The art class on Tuesday mornings, yes, with uh, Marguerite. Watercolor, yeah. Yes. It was $15. Wow. Yeah, we, we just started that. Uh, this week was the first time Marguerite's been coming and teaching watercolors on Tuesday mornings from 9.30 to noon. And the upstairs, she charged $15 a day. She's fantastic uh, watercolors. 
and that's enjoyable. And then throughout the year, we also have yoga classes. Huh? Yoga upstairs. So not only can you have fun sailing, you can get fit and very artistic. Right. Yes. No, yeah. a lot of people will want to learn how to sail. They don't know if they want to join as a member yet. So we offer the classes to the public. Anybody can take our class. Uh, the eight hour course is $150 to the general public. If you're a member of the sailing center and you don't know how to sail and you want to learn how to sail, we'll charge you $100 to take that class. If you're not a member, you paid the hundred and fifty dollars, and within a week, say, "Hey, this is kind of cool. I like doing this." We will take fifty dollars off your membership fee, so that you get the hundred dollar membership price for the for the sale classes. And your your classes don't end when the class ends. I've got a great staff of excellent sailors and instructors. There's nothing we like to do better than talk about sailing. So you go out and you know, we watch you out there sailing. We always have eyes out on the water and safety boats in the water. And I can see that you're having a little trouble over by the intercoastal or coming back in. The wind's coming from the west and you're sailing west. Sailboats don't sail straight into the wind, no matter what they try to tell you. You gotta have, have to have an angle, at least 45 degrees, lots of wind to come in. And I'll see you having troubles. He come in, my staff will go, up, yeah, I saw you having a little trouble coming in, you know. What I saw happening, and we'll educate you. We'll let you know what you can do to improve your sailing next time. And it, it's just fun. I mean, you join as a member, then you become part of the family. And some of my closest friends over the last 10 years down here are members of the sailing center. You know, they, they come in from complete strangers to members to very nice dinner uh, yes to have to, hey, what are you gonna do for Christmas? Why don't you come over to my house? And, and you, it's a family. The sailing center is a family of people, like-minded people. It's a, a, a family-friendly place. We don't have a restaurant and we don't have a bar. It's uh, the Nelson County safe place. Anybody who feels threatened down there can come in and uh, you are in a safe place if you need medical attention, you need uh, police protection or whatever, you come in and we will make sure you get whatever you need. We want the place to be uh, a facility that everybody feels safe and comfortable with. Questions? We do it about every other weekend. We don't want coming up this weekend. And uh, you can, uh, I've got my cards and uh, some pamphlets over here on the table for the sailing center. Please help yourself to them. You call down to the office, 727-517-7776, and ask about what the next class is and the availabilities. Can, we, can you get on the list? You can pay when you come into the class. You don't have to pay up front. You're talking to somebody who's been sailing for 60, 70 years now. Sailing is sailing. I don't care what time of year it is. That's what they make warm clothes for. <laughs> but there are people that like to learn how to sail when it's a little warmer. Okay, yeah. You, yeah, you don't want to freeze that. And that, that's one of the first things we go over is dressing appropriately for the conditions. If you dress appropriately to go out, you know, you always take more clothes than you ever need. And you dress more, put more on than you need. Because it's much easier to take a jacket off than to sit out there and freeze to death in a wet t-shirt and bathing suit. So, you know, we, we tell you what to do. You don't have to run out, you don't have to buy the expensive Henry Lloyd 
foul weather jackets and all this you know, the amazing thing I tell all my students because you know they look at footwear you know do I need boating shoes well you don't know if you like boating yet so why go out and spend a hundred dollars on a pair of shoes that are going to get wet you might not like sailing to run over to Walmart, you can buy a fifteen dollar pair of sneakers that smell just as bad as my hundred dollar boating shoes. And then after you decide, hey, this is fun, then you can start picking up the gear. But yeah, dressing warm. This time of year, I wear a, a neoprene shorty dive suit, short sleeve, short legs, and I wear a polar fleece jacket over top. Something I can, yeah, it, yeah, just a fleece jacket. That and my life jacket is enough to keep me warm on almost any day. I wear a pair of neoprene booties because they were given to me, but otherwise I'd be wearing my sneakers. Uh, and you know, it, it's comfortable for me. And uh, it's not an expensive sport to get into. We try and keep it very reasonable for all of our members and guests who come out. Other questions? How'd you get the building built? Ah, uh, they had a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, I, they, we grew from being on the beach to uh, the uh, Clearwater Community Sailing Association getting in charge, and they said we needed something a little more than pop-up tents, and we wanted something a little more permanent. So, uh, Joe Calio got together with uh, the board members in the city and they had a drawing came up. And the drawing was half the building you see now, the uh, north side, the, the deck area. That wasn't in the original building. And they built a two-story building and the programs grew and got bigger and bigger and they were running out of space. So they had some fundraisers and they came up with uh, the gentleman that drew the original drawing, drew the decking onto the side, got the permits, and we branched out from there. Uh, back then, the sailing center, it, it is city property. We rent from the city, they're our landlord. But uh, our landlord back then was uh, Marine and Aviation which is the marinas and uh, Clearwater Air Park. The great people to work with. But after the World Championship, uh, I don't know exactly how it happened, but all of a sudden, Parks and Rec said, hey, we'd like to get back involved with this. So we went from being part of marine and aviation, and now we're back with Parks and Recreation. And they are down there, and we're looking, uh, if you've been into our parking area, the north side goes from being paved to once upon a time it was paved. It's sort of potholed and sanded over, bouncy to go down to that little beach area. Well, they're looking at repaving that, uh, putting in new lighting. We're putting in new security uh, cameras. Uh, up until uh, Irma came, we had cameras that faced out on the water, and we could rotate them from uh, in the office and zoom in. So that while you're out on the water, like I said, we keep an eye on you all the time. We have a safety boat in the water at all times. And if we saw a boat that was just sitting out there, sails lopping, you know, we'd zoom in on it and see if it looked like they were trying to fix something, if they had a lodge, or whatever. If they looked like they, they were in trouble, we'd have a safety boat out there offering assistance. And uh, we're getting new cameras there. Uh, we're looking at uh, storage. Storage is a major problem. We're looking at having a, a steel building built on the north end of our uh, yard that would be 70 foot long, 20 some foot wide, that, and had four garage door bays. So we could put our windsurfing gear, kayaks, uh, paddle boards, and smaller boats inside in bad weather. Close down, padlock them, go home and enjoy the storm. And right, right now, you know, we, we get word that we have a tropical storm coming in, and we're out there with rope tying things down, and, uh, and we, we, we've got a lot, a lot of things that we're looking forward to doing, 
And uh, like I said, working with uh, the city is just always a pleasure. They they uh, enjoy the sailing center. They, they realize that it is a, a resource to the city. And we're, we're proud to be part of it. So, any other questions? Yes, it is free parking. Nice. <laughs> okay, you'll be here for a few minutes. They need to yes. And remember, there are things to pick up on the table if you want to take anything with you. And Rich, we very much appreciate you coming over to talk My to pleasure. you. My pleasure.